Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with our master budget and we are now moving to the raw materials budget. So remember that uh, last time we got to do this in order. Last time we did the sales budget, then we did the production budget, and now we're able to do the raw materials budget. And why does it have to be in that order? Because in order uh, to do anything we got to know <laughs> how much we're going to sell basically and then we can think about how much we are going to uh, need to produce in order to meet our sales needs and that's where we are at we have these production numbers in units we're talking about units in this case and if we're talking about you know widgets or if we had guitars or something this is how many guitars we would make now we need to know how much material we're going to need in order to make that guitar so how much we're going to have to purchase in terms of raw materials in order to do that remember that in in these types of problems many times uh, what we're going to have to think about is how many units of material does it take to produce one unit of um, product. So and that's what we're going to take a look at within the raw materials production budget, which must be done after we do the production budget. So we're going to start. We're going to start off with the production budget in units, the numbers that we just uh, calculated up here. Remember that we are working in the third quarter, being July, August, and September. And we're just going to pull these numbers down. So I'm going to say this equals what we came up with in the production budget. This is how many units that we believe we need to uh, produce in uh, July. In August, we believe it's going to be 20. And yes, you can copy and paste this over and it would work. And uh, 20,005 for September. Next, we're going to need the material requirements per unit. So basically, these are the units we're going to make. And we're going to say, well, how much raw material, how many how many things do we need in order to make that? So if it's a guitar, we would need, we'd be talking about how much wood would, would we need in order to make that. We're going to have to get that from the problem. Obviously, in real life, we would have some kind of estimate of how much material it takes to make each of these things. And uh, we're going to take that from the problem. So the problem is going to have to give us somewhere that uh, how much material it will take. And in this case, we have right here, raw material units per uh, finished, it's 0.5. So 0.5 units. So we're going to be up here. We're going to say it's 0.5, enter. And that's how many units that we will have. Then if we multiply that out, then for the 19,586, uh, we're going to say it's only going to take the 0.5 units. And therefore, we would need 9,793 units. We're going to do that for August. Whoop. Well, first I got to put the 0.5 all the way across. 0.5 for August and 0.5 for September. So for August, we're going to say this is how many units we need to produce times 0.5, which is the amount of the material per unit. And that will give us uh, August. September will be the 20,005 times, once again, the 0.5. So that gives us the materials needed for production. However, just like we had up here when we did the production budget in, in total units, we also down here might want to have some inventory left over at the end of the month. So in this case, at the end of July, we might want to have some left over, and therefore we, we would want to budget for that. We want to say, okay, I want to have some kind of cushion uh, if, I, if we make 9,793 units. We also want to have some left over. Let's plan for that. We're going to need some type of plan for that. Uh, a problem is going to have to give us some type of plan for that. So in this problem, we have ending raw materials percent of next month's material. So there, we're saying 50% of next month's materials needed. So what that is trying to say here is we're saying next month we're going to need uh, 10,000 units of materials needed for production. We want to have a general rule that we want to plan for ending inventory of 50% of next month's. That's going to be kind of our cushion rule that we will have. So for July, we're going to say this equals 10,000. That's what we're going to need next month times 0.5. Enter. We're going to, we want 5,000 basically left in the warehouse as of the end of July. In August, we're going to say, well, that equals the 10,250 units that we'll need in production in September times 0.5. That's kind of the cushion that we're going to want in uh, August. And then we get to September, and, you, and of course the question is, well, we, we only have the three months here. We're only working on this quarter. How am I going to get this number? And the problem is going to have to give us that in some way. Uh, they can either give us what the material needed for production is, so we can take 50% of it, or they can just give us the number. This, this problem just gives us the number here. So we see that uh, raw materials and units, they gave us this, this number for uh, September in this case. So we're just going to plug in the 4,000. So then we can add those two up. I'm just going to add up the 9793. That's the materials needed plus how much we want in the inventory. 
We're going to do the same thing for August. We're going to say we're going to produce the uh, 10,000. 